Hey, what's up? Today, we'll be looking at the future climate activists warned us about. The same future they tried to prevent by ruining priceless paintings and blocking highways. That future is now here, and honestly, it's not all that bad. The music is a blast to listen to, and there's plenty of robots for company. Not that they're all hostile, some of them will even offer powerful gadgets for completing their quest. When you first start playing, your moveset will be limited to sprinting, double jumping and bouncing off robot heads like a certain famous plumber. Later, after acquiring more gadgets, you will be able to take to the sky with your jetpack and traverse the terrain at breakneck speed with your grappling hook. At which point, enemies will be at your mercy as you rain fire from above and challenge rooms lose their challenge, becoming just regular rooms. So how did we get here? You might ask yourself. Global warming. After ignoring the signs for so long and reaching past the point of no return, humanity built a powerful AI named Iris to terraform the planet back into something habitable. It built cities to shelter everyone and was making great progress on its task, but halfway through it went rogue and turned on its creators. You guys need to get out of my city, it said, probably, as it kicked everyone out. Many years passed with the memory of these events long forgotten as humanity is left to wander the hostile environment. This is where our journey begins. While exploring the desert, Max stumbles upon a broken robot. During the repair process, she discovers that its mission is to take humans to a city. Curious, she decides to activate and follow it on its quest. Our first stop is at the canyons. There are six classes to choose from, and we'll be switching to each along the way. For those who still enjoy the practice of social distancing, the Guardian is a great choice. The shield will give you total immunity from bullets and anything else you can think of. His other ability is punching, which can be upgraded into a sledgehammer. Bunking enemies is fun, but becomes increasingly dangerous on higher difficulties. The map features branching paths that encourage multiple playthroughs to discover all the quests and secrets each level has to offer. But for now, we'll be heading down to the quarry. I really love the interactive loading screen. Ever since the patent expired, it's been fun to see what developers could come up with. The recon is a great pick if you enjoy the occasional fish and chips down at the local pub and poking people with pointy objects. The main gimmick here is the combo meter. Takedowns will increase the counter by 1 and once full your next stagger hit will deal 200% more damage. His other skill is a short range dash that briefly stuns surrounding enemies. Emphasis on short, since the dash barely covers any distance and is completely outclassed by the grappling hook later. At the end of every second level, there's a boss waiting for you. They're random and each boss has their own gimmick. This one for example has a small surprise in store for you if you defeat it without pulling the lever on its back. I highly encourage you to try it out in your own game. Moving on, we arrive at Aqua Station, which lies just beyond the gates. This is where we have our first encounter with Iris. Mistaken for a virus from browsing too many of those sites, we choose to ignore it and head into the city. For those who are feeling particularly lazy or find aiming challenging, they will enjoy playing the engineer. His personal drone army will follow him around and engage any hostile units in the vicinity. With the right upgrades, your drones will make quick work of any encounter without you having to lift a finger. Next, we'll head toward the energy center. If you enjoy casting the occasional spell, the elementalist automatically toggles between the three elements. Fire, ice and electricity. Shooting fireballs, ice shards and lightning bolts respectively. There's an upgrade where the primary ability reduces the cooldown of the secondary, and vice versa. This will let you spend more time casting spells than actually shooting. But more importantly, you may have noticed that someone has joined us. This game lets you engage in jolly cooperation. And much like Souls games, communication is very limited. You can't even add players to your friends list. However, there is a basic etiquette I've observed among players. To greet someone, crouch multiple times. Same thing for saying goodbye. This non-verbal communication was very easy for me to intuit, since we have a similar thing going on at the local gym. Arriving at Haven City, Max takes a break to admire the sights and grabs a bite of the fruit lying around. 
Iris appears to let us know that due to high real estate prices, the number of vacant houses has gone up by 100%. And for that, we have none other than Iris to thank for. Max, visibly upset at this revelation and the lack of affordable housing, is now off to find Iris and file a formal complaint. If you are a gamer that enjoys throwing the occasional object, you'll be glad to know that the range exists. The main skill lets you throw spears. There's a limited number, but you can recover a spear by simply walking over it or by waiting a few seconds. Going invisible with the second skill also recovers all spears. There are plenty of upgrades to make this synergy even stronger, strong enough to take on even the final boss. We've made it to District 13. This is where we previously saw that pillar of light. If you want stuff blown up, the commander will take care of it for you. With the upgrades to make explosions explode again and reload instantly, you'll have a blast firing your gun. This gun, for example, shoots four rockets. On hit, each rocket has a chance to split into three rockets and every explosion in this chain has a chance to trigger another explosion. Jumping ahead past the boss fight, we discover that Iris is on the moon, and our only means of getting there is the tower we just destroyed. So the AI begins to laugh, thinking itself untouchable, not knowing cars can now fly by welding some wings to it, and can even go to space by slapping a rocket engine on its back. This is it. By activating all the crystals found in the optional areas on the map, we've disabled the laser room and significantly crippled the final boss. All that's left now is dealing with a few enemies, blocking our path forward. To better prepare for the final encounter, we have the option of rerolling the stats on our weapon in hope of getting something better. If this awakened your gambling addiction, you'll be glad to know that you can go even further by gambling with your meta progression currency. Who knows, you might even get lucky while chasing that dopamine drip. Now, let's see what lies beyond this giant door. During the fight, mines and enemies will spawn in the arena. My advice is to treat the floor as lava and ignore the enemies, focusing on the boss only. Ignoring your problems might give you temporary pose and they might come back bigger and stronger, but there's a small chance they'll just get bored and leave. Like those emails I've been getting of people logging into my Ubisoft account. They'll just go away once they noticed I don't own any games there. We've been fighting for a while now, and it's gotten way past bedtime. Iris is now taking quick naps on the ground, in between attacks. If you pay close attention to the invisible bar that just appeared, you'll notice that it starts filling during the naps. Once filled, it will unleash a devastating attack that would one-shot the party and end the run. I also just made everything up, and this bug is purely visual and only happens if there's high latency between the players. Or I should say happened, since this was apparently fixed shortly after this recording. Once defeated, Iris has a change of heart and reverts to normal. Using the slap of a gentle persuasion, Max convinces it to join our party as we turn our gaze to Earth with plans of making humanity great again. RoboQuest came out of Early Access recently and they did a great job listening to player feedback and implementing it into the game. I remember the dark times when enemies would drop experience orbs on the ground and you had to pick them up before they disappeared. So glad they changed that. Now, with even more content to look forward to, I'd say the game is definitely worth your time. Especially if you can convince a friend to join you. We've reached the end of this journey. Thank you for watching and making it this far, dear viewer. See you next time.